Hello, and welcome back to Time Spudders in Detail. As with the previous videos, we'll be using a few tricks to help us get to places we shouldn't, and explore out of bounds, in an attempt to cover every detail of the game. In this episode, we'll be exploring one of my favourite levels from the original game, Spaceways. Something I'd like to quickly mention is, as there didn't appear to be any working cheats or tools to help me get out of bounds for Time Spudders 1, I decided to start work on a small project to enable me to do this, which I'll be using throughout this episode and further on into the series. My goal is to eventually release a tool or trainer which might be useful to other people interested in playing around with the Time Splitters games. I'll include anything interesting that I find through this project in my Time Splitters Extra videos, which can be found on my channel and will run alongside Time Splitters in detail. So, let's begin with the starting area of Spaceways. You begin the level outside of what is essentially a futuristic spaceport, though it is worth mentioning that according to the level select screen, Spaceways takes place in 2035. Personally, I think this might be a little too early of a date to set a spaceport which claims to have faster than light travel, numerous alien races and ray guns. It's suggested by fans that the actual date may have been 2350, rather than 2035, which would certainly make more sense. I had a glance through the game's files and all instances of spaceways in multiple languages referenced 2035. So, as you can see here, I've raised the player's height. This gives us an aerial view of the starting location. One of the cool things about spaceways were the hover taxis darting around the entrance. They can push the player but will not cause any damage. They eventually disappear into a black void where we can't follow due to an invisible wall but we'll get around this and see what happens once the taxis exit. Now that we've pushed through the barrier, we're out of bounds. We can see that the taxis stop briefly, then disappear, with a new taxi appearing at the other side. I suspected that, like the aeroplane in Time Splitters 2 Streets, that these were the same taxis, and that if I were to leave bullet holes on them, they'd remain. This did prove to be the case. You can see the damage has remained on the taxi. Once it reaches this location, it simply teleports back to where it was on a continuous loop. In arcade mode, you're normally unable to reach the starting location due to a locked door. You can see in this mode that the taxis don't appear at all. Once we enter Spaceways, we're greeted with a large lobby area filled with fake advertisements for space-themed travel companies. It also appears that this area isn't enclosed with a proper roof, so it's partially exposed. A sign that keeps appearing in this level is a photo of Earth and an arrow showing where we are. This photo is actually a pretty common image known as the Blue Marble, taken by the crew of Apollo 17. Using this image as a reference, it appears this spaceways is located, potentially in South America, though it could also be located in the southern region of the USA. If we ascend through the roof of the lobby, well, there's nothing there sadly. As we leave the lobby area, we enter a small corridor. Through the windows, we can see other parts of the Spaceways building, but let's try to get a closer look. Moving through to the next set of corridors is another windowed area that gives us another glimpse of the Spaceways building.
As we make our way towards the launch pad, there's one more corridor with a glass section. It's worth noting that whilst the rocket is straight ahead of us, when we travel upwards through this corridor section, the game will only render what it needs to, so we won't see the rocket or any other tall structures. So, now that we're finally at the launch pad, we can take a good look at the rocket and surrounding area. The rocket was never really too hard to see up close, but it's still nice to get to the top of it. From this point onwards, there's not much else left to see in the level. There's a courtesy desk at the middle floor, and a bar on the upper left floor where we pick up the duty free. The duty free is, as you can imagine, stuffed full of bottles. The last section of a level before boarding the rocket has a final desk and a small rocket statue. This basically concludes what there is to see in story mode for Spaceways, but I have to dedicate some time to the announcements you hear throughout the level. I think one of the things that really gives Spaceways its character are these silly announcements going on as the player is essentially tearing up the spaceport. Scrooge Space Lines regrettably announced the delay of Flight 47 to Alpha Centauri. Last call for Splinky Star Lines Flight 79 to Barnard Star. Any passengers still wishing to go to Barnard Star, please make your way to Gate 79. Fuel technicians to Pad 43. Zabob Calframadron, you've left your trousers at reception. Those passengers shooting at each other in reception, please stop! Acme Spaceways flight to Pluto, now boarding gate 53. Flight 242 to Deimos is currently running 30 gamma spans late. Spaceways Flight 909 to Janus is now boarding. Okay, so the last thing for us to look at is Spaceways in Arcade Mode. The map is identical in every way with the exception of this door being locked, leaving players confined to the launch pad area. Using some tricks I'm able to set the door to open and explore the rest of the level freely. 
Interestingly, the rest of the doors, whilst closed, can be opened by pressing X, though there are actually two separate doors which can be individually opened or closed. In the story mode, these doors open together automatically when the player gets near them, likely through the use of some trigger work. As you can imagine, the rest of the level does not include any weapon pickups, health or armour, and as mentioned before, the taxis don't appear at the entrance. I decided to play with bots, and leave the doors open to see if any would follow me out to the entrance. Unfortunately, I didn't have any AI follow me, and it turns out they wouldn't leave the starting area and move past the door. I'm surprised that the AI doesn't just follow me through the door as they're hunting me down. You can see on the radar that they follow me to the door, but won't go through it and eventually gather in a large group. And with that, I think I've covered just about everything worth noting for Spaceways. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.